Well, good morning, my friends, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Matt Nokas, and I am glad you are here. Today, something special begins. My journey across the continent of Africa from east to west, and I am beginning this journey in a very special place on the tropical paradise island of Zanzibar, specifically in Stone Town at Christ Church at the former East African slave market. you haven't done so already, I'd like you to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell because you are going to see things that will just blow your mind as I am going off the beaten path into the heart of Africa from one side of the continent to the other and it's beginning today. Well, good morning, my friends from Zanzibar. I'm in Stone Town, the beautiful port city of Zanzibar. And with me here today Daniel. to help me is Daniel. Yeah. Yeah. Daniel is Maasai. Yes, the Maasai people. Now, Daniel is from the Gorongoro area, which is a national park. It's more inland. What is this for, Daniel? What, what, this what? is in the sticky, but the special is For Maasai. hunting. Yes. For hunting. This is a kacha. Kacha. But it is the fashion. Show me that. Wow. You don't want to rumble with this guy. Look at this. <laughs> yeah. Today, I'm starting in Zanzibar yeah. at the former East African slave market at Christchurch. Uh -huh. I'm going to head north to the slave caves. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to head east. Okay? And then eventually go east. south. Yeah. To road. what's going to be the southern tip or the southern point of the island. So that is the plan of attack. I don't think it's going to be many kilometers, but it is going to be many hours because the roads are a little rough. And Daniel has helped me <laughs> this morning get ready. So thank you, Daniel. Isn't there suggesting tracking?
popular place. They have beachfront access, they have a swimming pool, restaurant. Well, I think it's about a three star, four star hotel. But it's beautiful. Getting back to the Swahili lessons. The most important words you can learn in Swahili here in Zanzibar is Hakuna Matata. No problem, my brother. No problem, my sister. Hakuna Matata. Yeah, so if you know Hakuna Matata, you can get around a lot. <laughs> Zanzibar Port Corporation and Ferry Terminal. Now throughout history, the island of Zanzibar became known for two things, spices. The unique location of this island on the Indian Ocean in the tropics, right on the equator, make it perfectly situated for growing spices such as saffron. Spices grow abundantly here and traders came from all over the world to buy and sell spices. The second thing and sad part about the history of this island is the slave trade. Now, Zanzibar did not create slavery, but it did create the first open public slave market in the world. here at what probably is the most important monument in the nation and maybe the world. It is the East African Slave Trade Exhibit. And I have asked my expert tour guide to give me a tour and to inform me a little bit more about the significant nature of the history of Zanzibar and the East African slave trade. So shall we go? Yeah. All these you see today has come after the abolishment of our slave trade. And uh, speaking of the time of slavery, like back to 200 years back, even the vision of the town of uh, Stone Town wasn't the same as it is nowadays. By shape, it was like a triangle surrounded with water all side. And before being called Stone Town, it used to be called as a fisherman's island. Let's take a look inside the church because there are many things inside that have great historical significance. For example, this church now stands on the place where the whipping post for the slaves once existed. It was replaced with this church. We'll talk a little bit about why. So we are now going to the Christ Cathedral Church, the church which was built on the spot where the market used to be by the British missionary who are here after the speech of Dr. David Livingstone, who by profession was a doctor who used to work in South Africa as a doctor from 1840 to 1843. Then uh, he went back in England and swapped the career from a doctor to an explorer, where he was supposed to come over here in East Africa to explore the source of River Nile. We got the longest river that starts from east of Africa and pours its water at the north, which gives irrigation to almost like five countries. Begin from a Lake Victoria that connects Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. From Ginger, Uganda, that's the real source of it. 
but like any other human being, Livingstone was uh, uh, assuming the Nile must be starting from a high peak. So on his mind, he thought like uh, from the central of Africa, there must be a Kilimanjaro as the highest mountain. So instead of looking for a lake nearby, he spent a lot of time to focus on getting to the central. And since he was anti-slavery, whenever he wrote letters, they didn't reach in Zanzibar so that they can go to Europe, whereby there was no link between him and people in England. Just to clarify, people in England hire another man called Henry Morton Stanley to come and looking for him. And when Stanley came, he started showing pictures to different people, and there were some who told him that we saw him heading to the central. He rushed to that area, and according to him, it was an easy tax, because from where he found, he was the only white man at that village, and that's where the famous court is coming from. As a Dr. Livingstone, I presume, by the time they met, he gave him a box of medicine, and from there, then Livingstone went back in England and write a strong speech to the parliament, which resulted four years later to form a group of missionary from Cambridge and Oxford known as UMCA. In long form, we call it University Missionary to Central of Africa. And those are the builders of this church. Christmas Day in 1873, that was the time that it was built under supervision of only one engineer. And that's his grave, oh. written in Swahili. So he was instrumental in bringing an end yeah. to public slavery. Yeah. Lucky enough, a part of being bishop, he was also engineer. This marks the white circle represent where the jojoba tree used to be and the red marble surrounding it represent the blood of those African which was wasted by that tree. When a buyer's notice slaves spent a lot of time in those rooms, they will take advantage of the situation to lower the price. In order to prove wrong the buyer, the owner had to take that slave to that tree, tie him and whipping him as a test. Results come after is giving out the price. The one who cry early, the assume is weak, price going down, and the buyer wins, get him in uh, money that he offered. And uh, the one who entering the pain, they consider him as a strong man, price goes up. If a father, he will be able to go with his kid, because a kid is just given out as a bonus. Now let's take a look at another important artifact here in the church. Can you see that crucifix behind me? You see it? Dr. David Livingstone didn't die in Zanzibar. He died in Zambia. And when he died, his heart was taken out of his body and buried under a tree. This was because Dr. Livingstone's heart was with Africa. The wood of this cross is the tree under which his heart is buried. His body was subsequently embalmed and brought here to Zanzibar for an inspection to see if it was really him. And it might interest you to know the way that they identified him was by the fact that there was a break in his arm. And he sustained a break in his arm in one of his expeditions when a lion attacked him and broke his arm. So they positively identified his body and sent his body from here back to England for his burial at West. Westminster Abbey. Slaves were taken from the shipping port to this slave market and held for a period of time until they could be repaired and assessed. Potential sellers wanted to know the worth of each slave and potential buyers wanted to know that they were buying a strong, healthy person so that they could enjoy many years of free labor. But the conditions that the slaves lived in were horrendous. Let's take a look at where they were taken after they were taken off the ships. So we are now heading to the slab dungeons. Watch your steps and definitely mind your head. So through the time of slavery, this door wasn't there. At this small room here, that's where they used to enter. 
there was like a tunnel where they will get over here. Male will go on that side. Women and kids will go on my left hand side there. According to historians, anywhere between 50 and 100 slaves would live down here for weeks at a time, waiting to be processed and sold at the auction just a few feet away from here. There's no toilet facilities in here. It's hot and steamy. There's very little ventilation. And of course, there's no way for slaves to escape. living here. It's so hot and humid. Let's go back out. What is remarkable is the fact that 50,000 slaves a year were sold, 50,000 from all over the continent. The slave traders were opportunists. They would hunt elephants, take the ivory, capture slaves, make the slaves carry the ivory to market, sell the ivory, and then sell the slaves. So there's a lot of history on this island, and some of the stories here are especially moving. One particular story I want to call your attention to is the story of Cipriani Asmani. The story of Cipriani Asmani was that he was a six-year-old slave. He was a boy. Cipriani tried to run away and escape slavery. His owners caught him, and what they did is they chained him to a 30-pound log. So he had to carry this log wherever he went. This was done in order to keep him close and prevent him from escaping. After a year, a missionary noticed this boy, came up with some money, and bought him and set him free. So Dr. David Livingstone, Christian missionaries, the British government, the British Navy, all worked in concert to bring an end to this horrific crime and dark chapter in history. Cipriani Asmani. When the public slave market closed here in 1873, it was the last and final slave market of the world to do so. Zanzibar became the first public, openly traded, institutionalized slave market in the world. And it became the last slave market to close. But when it did, make no mistake about it, slavery didn't stop. Instead, it went underground. Now let's go to a place where slave traders continued to practice their illegal work, their dark work in the sale of human cargo. Time to mount up the steed here. Ignition. Success. Starter. Everything starts up. All right.
was in Stonetown, I noticed a lot of big wooden doors, like the one you see right here, with these type of ornaments on it. They're kind of long and sharp, about four inches long. I was told that in the old days, the reason why those pointy knobs were put on the doors was to prevent elephants from crashing the doors in. Well, any trip to Zanzibar City would not be complete unless one visits the David Livingstone House. That's it, right behind me. This is where the legendary explorer, Dr. Livingstone, took a rest between his exploration into the interior of Africa. The ruling sultan at the time made this place available for him to come and rest and conduct his business. And doubtless, some of his business included rallying the citizens of the United Kingdom now England to put an end to public slavery. So here it is, the David Livingstone House, a significant landmark often overlooked, but something I wanted to show you. A significant historic landmark, just 12 miles north of Zanzibar City. Very few people wow. know about it. It's a little difficult to get to, as you can see the road. Wow. 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 